OK, so hello, everybody. My name is Jason Tang. And as you can see, I am, my 20 time project is on researching the practical effects of listening to music. Now, I don't think it's um, very subtle to say that I really have an obsession for music. Like, I'd be walking to classes with my headphones on max volume, and I literally could not hear what anyone would be telling me. I'm one of your average, stereotypical band kids. So I hang out in the band room, in the music quad all the time, don't really go anywhere else. So I decided that my 20 time project would be, well, something on something I'm really passionate about, which is music. So before I go on, just a quick show of hands. Who owns a pair of headphones and specifically has one on them right now? Just a show of hands. OK, uh, now who here listens to those headphones almost like every day? So, as you can clearly see here, there's a wide majority of you guys who use headphones, listen to music. So, music is heavily ingrained within our society. So, why not try to find uh, certain practical applications for music? And that's what I tried to do. Um, I was originally going to do three different topics. One on uh, mental health, one on physical activity, and one on academics and intellectual abilities. However, I soon found out that my goals were a little too unrealistic for the amount of time and resources I had. So I had to cut back on a bit. Uh, so rather than starting with mental health, since that was one of the things that I couldn't really do, uh, the first thing I wanted to uh, test was physical exercise and its relationship to music. Now, it's no secret, music is basically uh, the easiest way I could say it, it's a justifiable legal drug for athletics. Uh, it, there's a lot of uh, scientific proof that shows that music enhances performance. However, that's not what I'm here to prove. I wanted to see specifically what kind of certain factors in music could influence athletic performance the most. And I was originally inspired by this from a study about this exact uh, point by Korgargus and Priest, which basically stated that there were four different factors in uh, music that could influence athletic performance. The first of which is tempo and rhythm. And this one's pretty simple, basically, how fast is the music? The second one is musicality. How does the music actually sound? The third of which is um, cultural impacts. So for example, uh, what do you identify with your culture and what the song has that relates to that. And the fourth of which is personal associations, which is uh, your memories, your thoughts, your feelings, and how does that relate to the music. So the one I wanted to test was rhythm, since, well, it's the easiest one to test, and I didn't have a lot of time to test the rest. So what did I do for this? Well, I decided to run the mile three times uh, in succession, one every day. And I did the first one in silence. This was my control, since I knew it was most likely going to be the slowest time. The second one I did at, with music at 120 beats per minute. Uh, for those who don't know how fast that is, it's basically your average walking speed. And the third I did at 160 beats per minute, which is a lot faster, and it's more of a running pace. And the results I found were that, obviously, the one in silence was the slowest. And the one with 120 beats per minute was the second fastest, with a roughly 100, or I'm sorry, with the roughly 20 second, or 27 second improvement. And the third one, which is the 160 beats per minute, was, well, the fastest. Now, you guys might ask, why is that? I believe, personally, uh, when I ran these miles, that I found that the silence, well, Silence is silence, but with the 120 beats per minute, it was more of a pace music. Since you're walking to it, it's like your walking tempo, it doesn't really push you to exercise further. It's more of, say, aerobic activities. So for example, if you're doing long distance running or long distance running training, the best t uh, type of music to use for that is 120 beats per minute. Now, for, say, sprinters and short distance running, the 160 beats per minute one would be more ideal, since I personally felt it was pushing me to go further and further and further. It was pushing me to run harder and harder and harder. And it sometimes gave me 
well, random outbursts of speed, which is why I found that time to be the fastest. So the second thing I decided to test was music's effect on intellectual ability. So just another show of hands, who's heard of the Mozart effect before? Which basically, you know, when people say listening to music or listening to Mozart music makes you smarter. See, this statement right here, who's, who's heard of that? Yeah, so just quick myth, uh, myth buster, this is not true. Well, it's sort of not true. Uh, there's no actual scientific proof that shows that listening to music makes you smarter. However, there is scientific proof, or not scientific proof, there have been studies that have been shown that music may enhance certain parts of your brain for a short period of time. Now, this was originally discovered by uh, Francis Rauscher in 1993, who uh, made a very controversial study about how listening to 15 minutes of Mozart music before taking a certain kind of IQ test yielded better results. However, this has been warped over time to make people think that listening to music makes you smarter. Well, listening to classical music makes you uh, smarter. And this is simply not true. Uh, in fact, any type of music that you or so may enjoy could also yield the same kind of effect. And the effect isn't really as strong as people might hope or people might find, but it is definitely noticeable. So uh, the type that it uh, influences is called spatial reasoning. So while I'm talking, I just want you to guys to look at these problems. Uh, this first, these first two problems are called form board tests. Basically, you have a set of shapes and you have to match them into the object. You can do so by rotating the shapes, but you cannot make the shapes bigger or smaller, and you cannot flip them. This second test here is called the paper folding test, where they would fold certain uh, pieces of paper and then punch a hole through uh, the paper, and then you would have to unfold the paper and see how many holes were in the paper once it was unfolded. These are just two of the three of the tests that I used to uh, and test whether this effect was true. Unfortunately, I wish I could have done more with this. However, most of the, um, most of the tests that I found were locked behind very expensive price tags. So the only tests that I could use were from this uh, book called the Kit of um, Factor Reference uh, Cognitive Tests, which I can't show you all of it today, but I highly encourage you to go and check out this book. Uh, it's for free online, and it has a wide variety of different cognitive tests that you can use to test yourself, and also to learn about the different kinds of uh, intellectual ability that your brain has. In this case, we test spatial reasoning, which is basically the ability to visualize objects and to visualize them in your head. For example, when you are solving these problems, you, in your head, think about how can I rotate this shape, how can I fit these two pieces together, uh, etc. And I found this is the most prevalent way of testing music, as it was the only uh, cognitive test that was supposed to yield positive results. So I did three tests, uh, these two, and one other one called surface development, and I did there were two parts to each test. I did one test in dead silence, or I one test uh, dead silent. So I never listened to music in that entire hour, and I did all these tests. But the second time, before I took each test, I listened to roughly 10, 15 minutes of my own personal music. And what I found were somewhat mixed results. I had an extreme, which with the form board test, for the first part, I got six wrong, but for the second part, I only got one. For the paper folding test, it actually yielded negative results for uh, some reason, where on the first part, I got none wrong, but on the second part, I got one. And then on the third test, I uh, got one wrong on the first part and zero wrong on the second. And I believe this to be that I didn't really have the necessary like, amount of testing material 
in order to show a clear uh, distinction since most of the tests were pretty short and didn't take very long. But the point is, is that music can be used for these particular visualization tests. And you guys might all be thinking, okay, that's great visualization, this visualization, that. How can I use this to get A pluses on my finals? Well, the point is, is you might not be able to. However, these can be used to influence certain categories. For example, uh, physics, geometry, anything that requires visualizing something in your head and then creating something out of it, music can help with that. And to explore this concept further, I uh, encourage to look at other types of music rather than just your own personal taste. See what other factors you can use to influence these results. Uh, maybe try other tests. Most studies only say that spatial reasoning and visualization is the only types of tests that actually are influenced by music. But who knows, there could be other forms, and uh, that's what I hope to explore in the future. So thank you. <laughs>